Hello everyone, welcome to Red Men TV. It is the fan reaction show for Liverpool 1, Athletic Bilbao 1. A first friendly at Anfield. Next one is obviously, of course, tomorrow. I'm your host, Ross Chanley, joined by Errol Smith for this one. No, this is normally a one-person show, but I thought I'd get Errol involved because he's just a nice fella, all that nice fella. Nice. Um, going to get through some of your comments in the show. If you're in the YouTube comments as well, you'll remember, uh, get involved in there as well. I'll be taking some of those, but I'm going to read some tweets out. Errol, I want to start with um, Jordan Delury says, woeful in front of goal, other than that very impressive scene that's nowhere near our first choice midfield. Milner too slow and Cater, they lack that recovery pace and energy, but not too bad. Need to be a lot more clinical in front of goal. I'm not 100% sure I agree with that comment. And neither do I, to be honest. Not from the the game that you know we we was watching. I think I said in the, in the match. I think we was quite competitive in midfield. I don't think we dictated the tempo in midfield the the best. I think that's probably fair to say. Yeah. Um. I don't think we was wasteful in front of goal. I think we was trying new things as well. There was quite a few more shots from outside of the goal as well. I think Harvey Elliott was unlucky with his shot. Um. I think even Virgil Van Dijk had two headers that he could have potentially put on target at least. He'll probably be a little bit gutted that he didn't do a little bit better there. Um. I think you know even Salah wasn't as selfish as we've probably seen him in the past. Really, the way he tried to set up. Um. Jota with the outside of his right foot as well. So I think there there was moments there where we you know we might have been a little, we could have been a little bit more clinical. But you know I was pleased with the overall play and the way that we kind of approached this game. If I'm completely honest with you, no, no, I completely agree with that. And I think equally you could also say that Athletic Bilbao were wasteful as well. You know they had a couple yeah. of chances, a couple of crosses in the six yard box, which they they also missed. But also that's kind of what pre seasons for, isn't it? You know I'm sure it comes to this in an instant match reaction of. The point is, but the fellow's got a point. But also, it's 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 pre season. Yeah, people will be rusty. You can expect to kind of miss those chances. Virgil Van Dijk hasn't played football in Christ knows how long. You know, I'm sure his eye, seventy I, minutes. I'm sure his eye for goal isn't a hundred percent of what you'd expect. But you know, yeah. get, that's what again. But that's what these games are for. So when it comes to the, the Premier League and Van Dijk gets another chance, I know this is a lot. A lot. This is hope. But he'll go into the season going, well, I've missed that diving header. You know, I'm, 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 I know where the goal is now. It's confidence that he'll take from that game. And I'm proud for a lot of other players as well, having fans back inside the stadium, but more so from Van Dijk. And we'll see it tomorrow, with, you know, hopefully with Joe Gomez as well. Of It's not just pre-season for Van Dijk. No. It's getting used to playing football again, which he hasn't played for such a long time. So I can understand him missing chances. Yeah, no, 100%. And again, just showing is that willingness to still get try and get his head on it and be, get on the end of these crosses as well it's, it's a big thing you're putting your body on the line that second one was a big dive and header at the back post and he was close he'll probably be a little bit gutted he didn't do better but they're positive signs for us and I think you know it's a pre-season game, so we should try and take more positives out of this game than negatives. I know that there is obviously one glaring one as a negative, but a large part of the game, I think, in terms of that midfield, Naby Keita had nice moments in it as well. I think uh, Harvey Elliott, he, he was my man of the match uh, for, for the game in terms of what he did. He was box-to-box. -box. He had some really good drives as well in, in the second half. Uh, I think Jota probably faded slightly for me up front in, in that second half. He looked really sharp to begin with as well. I think the front three was linking it nice. I think, you know, as I say, it's just pre-season. Everybody's getting back up to speed. And if that is us getting back up to speed on, you know, 70, 80% full capacity or full, yeah, whatever's in the tank, only 70, 80% getting used, it bodes well for when, you know, we do kick off the, the new season. And like, uh, like that first comment said there, Errol, of... <laughs> That's half the team. Yeah. You know, just still Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson, Joe Gomez, Bobby Firmino. You've got to, you've got to chuck into that mix. So it is looking quite well. Uh, Liverpool Red in the uh, Twitter comments um, has basically nailed the whole whole agenda of this show. Uh, Sadio is back to being Sadio after looking tired last season. Virgil is making progress, but not yet up to speed. Elliot is going to be a great player for us. Our third choice left back is class. Now we please stay fit. Hoping Robert will be back soon. Simicast a good backup. Uh, I just want to concentrate on the first part of that comment there, Errol, of Sadio is back to being Sadio, yeah, because I think the point's right, and I think the point has been the case for Sadio. If you, for those that have watched some of the other other preseason games, of it looks the Sadio of, what is it two seasons now? Because we're technically in a new season, yeah, two seasons ago of uh, quite dogged, aggressive, do you know, shoving people off the ball despite strong. getting kicked. Yeah, being yeah. being strong and ruthless. And he, the comments right, it, does, it doesn't look tired, but I think got an you know, assist as well. Yeah, do you know what I mean? We're talking about. Uh, the likes of Virgil van Dijk and stuff getting used to football. Manny said he's, he's made up the likes of Virgil van Dijk are, are back in back in the team because he can make runs that he couldn't make six months ago because our defenders didn't play like that or the team behind him is the team that, you know, that 
the, the knock-on effect of that gets him to the club to allow to play the, the way that he yeah. wants to play. He's going to be buzzing. Plus, he's had a physical and mental rest, which he so needed. desperately needed. I think 100%. the whole squad needed it because again, I said this before of going, you know, going to turn up for training. Great, three other players are injured now. You what know, do we do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just carry on for us. Just go again. I tell you what, I'm not going to play Regan Shakiri because they're not as good as you. So you just play three times this week for us. Like for a lot of other players, absolutely knackered. Now it's stop, have your rest. Go and have your little holiday, come back, and he looks he looks bang up for it, doesn't he? And I think you can take stock from all those, but uh, let's be honest, the poor games that he's had. He's seeing footage back now of you know what wasn't working. So let me go back to the stuff that that was working, and we seen that right from the first couple of minutes where those balls were being, as you was mentioning then, being played over the top, and he was able to get onto them, and you know his touch was coming back, and he looked as if he was just going to drop his shoulder and beat a man, and he he was standing up defenders, and you know he left people on his ass at times. I think that was really good, and I think the fact that there was the crowd in there as well getting involved. I think there was the one chance where the ball just kind of went over the top, and he doesn't quite make it, and he gets it, but the crowd reacted yeah. to that, and I think they're the important. Moments moments that I think he's probably missed um, and we kind of you can't really measure it but we can just tell there was something not right with Sadio Mane last season and hopefully the more the crowds are in the stadium the more he has obviously the, the, the players behind them in their positions getting used to it getting back up to match fitness the more the Sadio that we love and we know he's capable of being able to play up to that level will be back and delivering him for us so I've gotten I've got no reservations that Sadio Mane will have a resurgence. Sadio Mane will have a resurgence this season. Um, and, you know, as I say, he got an assist again today. I think he does look sharp, and hopefully that partnership with Keita comes in strong as well at some point. Yeah, uh, Scott Williams, our good friend Scott Williams, says um, need a central goal poacher to, to and to sharpen up in defence. Got to score more and concede less. But good moments first half. I, yeah, um, but I think again that's that's what kind of pre-season is for. And again, I think when you have. Liverpool's strongest team at the base of that midfield is Fabinho, which will allow the likes of Henderson and Thiago to kind of come into play there. Uh, you mentioned Diogo Jota, you know, really sharp first half, dipped off in the second, but that might be a consequence of where his fitness is up to. Mm -hmm. Knock-on effect is the first comment said of having Naby Keita, James Milner, Harvey Elliott in midfield. You know, there's still work to do. You know, I know we've seen it a lot in pre-season. Yeah. That's not a tried and tested Premier League midfield, which I don't think we'll we'll, we'll see that. Um, but again, you know, it, I think it also would be nice to see a goal poacher. Maybe that goal poacher is, is Roberto Firmino still. If he comes back, you know, I'm not saying he will, but anything like Sadio Mane has done, having had a physical, mental rest and, and everything else. I think, I think personally think Firmino will come good, come but good, I also yeah. think we need... We do need another striker. Well, it's just about having that competition, really. And I think, obviously, Jota is definitely that guy, the first person that you're going to bring off the bench or someone who might slowly start a transition between him and Firmino getting, rotating their, their game time down the middle for us. But even if you just look back, even if you, you wasn't able to watch the match and you can see the, the, the clips of that first goal, he took that goal really well. The ball gets fizzed into Mane. Mane fizzes the ball straight into his feet, gets out of his feet, and then he just buries it bottom in, leaves the keeper with no chance. Like, that is a clinical finish, do you know what I mean? And, like, they're the type of finishes we probably missed a lot last season, not giving defenders the opportunity to get close to us, close us down, close the ball down, not giving the keeper the opportunity to get set on his line. All those things will come good the more the more drilled we are and, and, and the more game time these lads get. So I do I do take on board that point that that lad's just made and I think it, we do need a clinical striker, but we've got clinical forwards on yeah. their day. We have got clinical forwards. I think it's just about, as I say, as you were saying before, pre-season, they've all got on the, on the goals. Yeah. They've and all got in, in the mix of the goals so far, so that's got to breed yeah. confidence. On another day, you, your substitution of Jota's fading a little bit in the game, yeah. You're bringing Bobby on. You're not bringing on Ben Woodburn or whoever it was. Exactly. Um, another good friend of the show, James Sutton, just said the word Harvey Elliott. So I said, thanks. He said, I'm always here. Um, <laughs> you're absolutely raving about Harvey Elliott. You know, it's the first glimpse you've seen him in pre-season. Yeah. He has been impressive. We spoke before about, you know, making extra runs into the box. The fact that he, that he backs himself. He's doing, you know, overlaps, underlaps with, with Mo Salah. Good link-up play. He's doing the defensive work. He's getting his body back on, on, on the line to defend things as well. I don't think there's a lot more you could ask from him, to be honest. Like, I know he nearly scores that goal, and if he is, we're praising him yeah, even high, more than, yeah. than we can do at the minute. But for someone who's been away, and then there was question marks, you know, from, from a lot of people, again, including myself, what do we do with him this season? Does he go out on loan? Does he need a Prem loan? Yeah, do do we sell yeah. him? And now, like, the past couple of days, it's like, no, keep just, just, just keep hold of him, yeah? Yeah, no, 100%. And you, when you think of it like that as well, I'm, I'm also thinking, like, in just on that 90 minutes that I've seen him play then, it's hard to try and highlight a weakness to his game. 
He seemed to read the game really well. He, he kind of covered in Trent's position a couple of times and made some last ditch tackles. Got the ball moving forward. He was driving with the ball. He was purposeful. He seemed to have that clearance at the edge of the box where he, he kind of just bullied his man and just got the ball clear for us. So all those little bits, I didn't know he had in his locker. But I feel like he's got confidence enough to say, well, I can show this on the pitch and I'll express myself as well when I get the opportunity. And as I said in the live stream, you also have to carry that with he's been tested. Yeah. He's been he's been tested in pre-season against, you know, a teams that I don't think are a Premier League standard. So there'll be question marks on him all season. It's great that he's doing it in pre-season now. But that's how you, that's how you make him better. Mm. I don't think he get as many minutes in the league as he has been doing in pre-season. Sorry, I mean, I don't think you play consistently for 90 minutes yeah, two, course. three, four times on the run because of, the, because of the options that we've got. But I'm feeling more confident that we can bring him on. And as we saw in that game there as well, when we made a, a couple of substitutes, he was playing Mo Salah's role and we just moved Mo Salah into the middle. That's, that's more versatility for, for Liverpool. And that's what Jurgen Klopp likes as well. Yeah, 100%. I think Klopp will be really pleased with his performance. It just seemed like a really complete performance for him. And the fact that when he did go over to that, to that right wing, that was probably one of his, again, that's where that shot come from. Yeah. Really, really good. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. A little bit of trickery, kind of dropped his shoulder, cut in, hit it with that left foot, and he nearly finds the top in for it. Do you know what I mean? Like mm. it was a solid effort, and he's just a little bit unlucky on another day that flies in, and you know, everybody's singing his name for the next five minutes. So it's those fine margins, really. But in terms of confidence, he will take a lot away from this game in terms of the fact that these lads they came to play. Yeah. They they really did. They didn't they did he wasn't there to just be walked over. It wasn't a possession. It wasn't really the level, as I said from the earlier in the It was a lot more intense than I thought it was gonna exactly. be. Yeah. Um so the other thing on the Harvey Elliott there, which I thought was quite interesting, a lot of people have picked out his decision making. Yeah. Now that that bit we were talking about where he's taking that shot, he found himself in that position a couple of times, but he stopped. Yeah. When there was two, three bodies in front of him, he he, re he recognised that that shot wasn't on and kept possession. That's really, really impressive for someone who's eighteen years old, isn't it? Yeah, and and I'm not just letting thinking oh, just glory hunting and just yeah. wanting to just take on the opportunity just because he thinks he's got half a chance. It was let me find the best chance to make this happen, and he was one on one with his man. And he dropped it. He knew he lost him, and thought this is it. I'm yeah. going for it. And he, you know, as I say, he was so close, fine margins. He really, nearly did pull it off for us, uh, and that would have been for the win at yeah. that point in time as well. So, I think. That level of bravery from such a young player, it can only bode well, really. You know, there's there's not on dent in his confidence, there's not on where you don't see his head drop. Yeah. You could see that first shot in the first half where he, he doesn't catch into it. The sky, and he screams yeah. into the sky because he's fuming. He, he knows in himself, I'm better than that. And that one was wide of the mark. The other one was, again, it's not on target, but it hit the woodwork. Yeah. So, and then that the reaction to that was, that should have went in. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. He just knew in his yeah. head, he was like, that was the one that should have went in. So, no, I, I, you know, high praise for him as, as a young lad. He, he kind of wears the shirt with pride. And, you know, I'm looking forward to what he, because he's an anomaly, other teams don't know what he's going to be able to do for us next season. And as fans, we don't fully know. Yeah. You know, Blackburn fans might have a bit more of an understanding of that and what he, what he can offer. Mm. But, as fans, that's exciting because other teams are going to be on the back foot when it comes to RV Elliott next season. Yeah, um, we've done all the nice stuff, Errol. Um, yeah. There's only one place to go. There's a couple of comments on, on, on Twitter, but Tor Legfold here says, sending prayers to Robbo. Mm -hmm. um, we've also had a super chat from Sheldon Mason. Thank you very much for £4.49. It says, do you think Simicast will be ready enough and do you think um, we do? And do you think we do without Robbo? Um, first of all, it looks... Looked horrible, didn't it? Yeah. Um, when he first rolled, it's just not like Andy Robertson to go down, stay down. You know, he's, he's taken a couple of bashings in his time at Liverpool, but he normally just picked himself back up. But he looked really uncomfortable. Seeing the replays, we both visibly winced yeah. when, when, when we saw it again. Um, hopefully, he'll be okay. Um, I said it might be precaution that he's been taken off. We don't know what the score is. I'm sure he'll have scans, and maybe it might be the case where, again, like the question from Sheldon there, Errol. You know, I know you've not seen much of Simicast, but you've seen all the feedback, and he has been quite impressive. And we've seen a lot more evidence of Simicas. Will he be ready enough? Well, he might not have a choice. Yeah. Now, and and, and that sometimes they're they're the, they're the best opportunities for players, really, when you just kind of thrust into it. You know, get a, a baptism of fire almost in some ways. You know, he, he's probably just been focusing on making sure that he's doing the right things in training and, and when he's getting opportunities in pre-season to just deliver. But now, when it when it matters most, you might be needed and we might have to call on you to, to, you know, to play for us in that Norwich game. And from from our perspective, hopefully that, you know, Robbo comes back, speedy recovery, and, and it's not as serious as that, that mm -hmm. initial, you know, view looked of the injury. Um, but we've got options now. It, it's not threadbare in defence. You know, we've got even... 
I went back was putting his name in the hat and it, exactly yeah. he, he seen it in his eyes just seemed to light up he was he was getting ready before the half time and desperate yeah. to get on the pitch so I, I th- you, you know you don't want to see any of your players get a serious injury in pre-season because it can set some people back and I think it did have a bit of an effect in terms of how the other 10 lads approached the game after that injury happened but broadly speaking I think we've got enough parts at the moment where we'll cope early, early doors you know you can't replicate Andy Robertson in this squad. What he does is very unique. He, he is a, one of our strongest assets. You know, those fullbacks are for us in terms of the way that the system works. But I firmly believe that, you know, when he comes back, that he will be just as, as good yeah. as he has, has been. And in terms of the backup, we will probably be able to cope, even if it isn't Simicast and it is Milner. He knows that role inside out, back back to front. Yeah, uh, and for Simicast, like I said before, I don't think he's, he's really got a choice whether he's up to speed or not. You know, he's, we've seen a lot more of him this, this pre-season. Um, and in, if, in doubt, you know, there's a break glass, James Milner at left-back if you, if you want to play it safe. So for Norwich, we might see Simicast. You know, I think he's defensively, you know, gave away a free kick against Hertha Berlin. There's still a bit, bit to work on. Yeah. But Liverpool's high line is, is really difficult. So, um, you know, we've, we've got plenty of options, like you said. Uh, a couple of comments in the YouTube. M. Brown says, Elliot is nuts. Great technique. And uh, Danny Harty-Smith commented again. Thank you very much. He says, I really enjoyed the game. I like the intensity of Sadio and how fresh Mo looked. And again, you know, we said it before about... Um, Sadio Mane, I think it's the same for Mo Salah. You know, yeah. he's going to have the bit between his teeth. We as fans, I think, and I don't want to speak for the whole of our fan base because that would be stupid, but also I think it would feel a bit aggrieved last season and how it went. And we were resigned to the fact of what, April, you know, probably March, get the season done, just like stop it now or whatever. For me, last season in my head didn't count. Like I know, I know it really did, but now it's like, well, we've got these fans back. We've got all our players back. Um, I know Thiago's father, a guy from Red Sea Podcast, because called it the revenge tour. And I kind of agree with that. I'm going, well, actually, we were pissed off when we missed out on Kiev. We went and won the, won the Champions yeah. League. We missed out on the league by a point. I think last season's in that category for me. Of going, last season was was never meant to happen. Mm-hmm. It was a freak. We've got a great group of lads who were, you know, Premier League, Champions League winners. That for me, can go out and win this Premier League again this season. Yeah, they'll be hungry for it. 100%. Yeah. I, 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 they'll have that appetite for it. And, you know, how many games did we see the preferred midfielder choice last season? Not many, handful. It was like half a game, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Like literally, there, there wasn't that much evidence to say how well they could be in and the ceiling that that midfield's got for us. How how many games did we see our preferred back four? You know, Allison was missing for games. Um, you, you know, Hendo, H- Jota yeah. was yeah. missing as well. Henderson. There was so many things that just went against us. And our look- orange eleven looks stronger than our actual. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. You, you could look at it and you could be like, you know, you can rule a few things down, and you don't want to feel sorry for yourself, but any rational fan or of any other club, if that amount of injuries happened to the players that they back as their significant players, they'd probably feel the same way. The emotions would run the same way and the logic would dictate that they just have to write off the season and take what you can from it. The fact that we still managed to qualify for you know Champions League with Reese Williams and uh, yeah, Nat Phillips in, in centre-back, it, it just speaks volumes of the level of the coaching staff, the, the management, the fact that Cop still instills belief in fact that you know that Beck that came on mm. he's a young lad today that's coming on for pre-season but he had the belief that he, he could do a job for us and he, he didn't let Klopp down or he didn't let any of the fans down and he, he kind of lived up to the, the hype really of just being able to enjoy a game without any fear and I think for, for us as, as fans that's reassuring it's got to be that once you've got all of your pieces in that puzzle and you know exactly where it's been in the past it's not a far cry to say well we can get back to that and if getting back to that is the level that we're expecting that could be 98 points in a season you know, most seasons that wins you the league. So, you know, it, it, it's got to, at some point, it's got to come good again and it's only a matter of time. But we just need to get a consistent run of games under our belt, see it for our own eyes. With, the, think, with the consistency, with the consistency of action. That's the yeah. key point. Yeah. And I think people will slowly start to realise that, yeah, even more on the evidence in going forward, that last season is something we just have to write off and we can kind of live with now. We're still in the Champions League, we can kick on. And hopefully we'll have some additions by the end of this, the summer as well. That'd be nice. Fingers crossed. Uh, also less pressure on Allison to score goals when you've got other team members that can do it as well, getting into the Champions League football. Uh, right, we're going to end that there. Do join us again for the play ratings, and I'm going to be doing that shortly. And if you'd like to, me and Errol will be doing an instant match reaction, a little bit more in depth, talking through the game and our thoughts and not most of the plays and the scenario of what happened being back at Anfield and stuff like that. So thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you soon. Ta-ra. Hey everyone, our brand new book has landed. Hendo, 10 years a red 
premium collector's edition, the definitive Jordan Henderson collection in A4 size, 200 pages, full color, incredible insight, in-depth knowledge, and the stories of his rise from a young boy in Sunderland all the way through their academy to the Premier League taking the captain's armband, becoming the captain, and leading Liverpool to be champions of everything and beyond as well. It's got his greatest moments season on season, some incredible, unique, phenomenal custom artwork from some of the best Liverpool artists on the scene, incredible high-definition photos of his best moments as well. It is an incredible Jordan Henderson collection, and it fits right in your hands, just about. It is a behemoth of a book, it is incredible, and it is available right now. You can get it and you can learn more about the Liverpool skipper from the people who are closest to him on that journey. Friends, family, coaches, players and managers. Yes, it is Hendo 10 Years of Red and it is available right now on redmenmerch.com. Get involved.